Hello and welcome. This is the Grasshopper tutorial series. Um, last tutorial I went over the user interface and this tutorial I'll be kind of adding a little bit to that but mainly I'll be focusing on mathematical operators in Grasshopper. Um, basically I'm choosing to do this um, tutorial on the operators now because I think it gives, it allow us to get a better understanding of how data works in Grasshopper and also um, introduce the panel component which um, allows us to view data in Grasshopper. So I think it's a it's a, a good topic to discuss this early on and it'll kind of let you guys know how important data really is to the Grasshopper program. So basically uh, I think the last tutorial in the interface I didn't cover uh, kind of the manipulation of the workspace. Um, right now it says no document loaded that's because there's no components and there's never been components on the canvas so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a generic component on here and and there you can see that the the canvas is active and I, I didn't really tell you guys how to move around in this workspace but basically I can hold the right mouse button down and it'll give me this hand and basically that just pans around the workspace and I can pan wherever I want to go so right mouse click pans um, also to zoom in and out it's simply just by using the scroll wheel on the mouse and that allows you to zoom in and out and I think um, that's about it aside from this icon down here which is called the uh, interface widget and it basically shows you where if you've got a bunch of stuff on the screen and, and, and I come out here and, I, and I, I get lost somehow it basically this black point points to where your um, icon your components are placed in the document so you can follow it and it'll tell you exactly where to go it's actually not the pointy thing it's it's this little dot nub <laughs> right here so that'll tell you exactly and each nub corresponds to different components so just follow those and you can find out exactly where and the arrow obviously points ex precisely to this upper left corner of the workspace so enough of that um, I think it's pretty easy to get around in Grasshopper but if anybody has any questions again feel free to contact me through the Facebook group or through email or however you'd like um, alright let's get into this uh, Mathematical operators. Basically, if any of you guys have had basic math, which I'm 100% sure all of you have if you're in college, um, we've got just basic mathematical operators in Grasshopper that can take data and perform mathematical calculations on it. We've got an addition component right here, which I just grabbed. And by the way, this is all under the math tab, or you can double click and type in addition, and, and you've got your component that shows up right here. You can also type in subtraction, um, division, um, multiplication. They all come up and they're all again right here. And last time in the interface tutorial I didn't, I didn't uh, tell you guys that there's this little arrow button in each of these um, boxes in the components panel. This arrow button if you click on it comes down and gives you all the available um, pos like in the operator section gives you all the available tools that it um, has. So again, if you want to go ahead and explore that a little bit yourself, you can you can find a lot of cool stuff in these that you otherwise would have known was even there. So let's uh, move on from that and let's let's go ahead and get into really what these things do. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag an addition component a subtraction component, a divide, and a multiply just to give you guys a good idea of how operators work um, and it's just like it's basically kind of like I, I said in the meeting it's, it's kind of like a calculator I mean a calculator asks you for a number usually and then you have to hit, hit the operator which is addition and then another number 
which would be B in this case. A would be the first number, you would type in the plus sign, then you would type in another number which would stand for the B, and then you would get a result. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use sliders in the first case for the addition component to show you ex just how easily this works and, and get you kind of familiarized with the operator's components. So all I have to do is type in, I don't usually like to type in slider, some people do. I like to just go ahead and type in a number. If I type in 10, it'll give me a slider that is already set up as an integer. If I double click here, you can see it's set up as an integer with a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 10. Okay, now let me go ahead and delete that and show you a little bit more about uh, just inputting numbers. If I input a number between 11 and 100, let's just say I type in 98. If I type in any number between 11 and 100, it will give me a slider pre-formatted as an integer with a domain from 0 to 100. So basically it goes by um, 10, 100, 1000. If you type in anything in those basically ranges, then it will kind of format a slider for you and you don't have to go in. For example, if I type in just slider, it, it is already formatted to be a three unit decimal place, which is a floating point between zero and one. And a lot of times I like to have a little bit more numbers than that. I mean, it kind of just depends on how you want to use it. But basically, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I want to have numbers between 0 and 10 so all I have to do is just type in 10 and then I have a pre-formatted slider from 0 to 10 just integers so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it control C control V and now I've got the same exact slider that I can now plug both of these in and now a calculation is be being performed in addition operators is performing a calculation on those two sliders. So this is where the panel component comes in. And I've talked about this in the meetings, but if you haven't been in the meetings, this is an extremely, extremely important component. And you can never underestimate the value of a panel component. Some people use it in every single step of their definitions, which I probably should. I don't necessarily go that far, but I usually use it to problem solve because if I go ahead and drag a panel component on the screen, which is uh, in the parameters tab special um, box and it's this yellow panel right here if you hover over it, it says panel also you can double click and just type in panel and it'll come up um, but basically you can just plug this in and there it gives you the results in the form of a list this panel basically gives you the data that comes out of the output of components which we've already talked about output um, in the last tutorial so hopefully you kind of understand that a little bit by now um, so basically if you add two numbers there is one result and that result is shown in the form of a list of one item and you can see right here that the list starts with item number zero now don't ask me why they do that I mean if common sense tells us that usually things start on one but for some reason in computers they like to start things in zero and it has something to do with the fact that grasshopper is a visual script editor it's a visual computer script editor and in computer script all lists all data starts with, with an item number of zero so don't question it just start thinking it just start knowing that every list starts with zero and the reason that you need to know which I'll get in f into further, but just a brief explanation. The reason that you need to know that the, a list starts with zero is because sometimes you're going to want to pull items out of a list. So if I have multiple items, let's say if I go ahead and copy this, and I want to I want to have multiple operations happening at once. If I go ahead and hold Shift, you can see the little plus sign by my mouse it will allow me to to connect two wires to a single input now it's not only adding 10 plus 10 right here it's also doing another calculation after that after that calculation to this bottom one so if I lower this down to 6 
you can see that 10 plus 10 is 20, which gives me the first result up here, which is item number zero. And if I add 10 plus six, 10 plus six for the second result, it gives me 16. So there's two values, but the values start with item number zero and item number one. Now, try to understand that right now. Try to try to get it in your minds and start counting from zero when you're counting out in the real world because that is a super, super important aspect of Grasshopper in any computer scripting program, which is going to be, it's just going to get more and more um, prevalent as you uh, go into the future and computers start taking over the world, basically. So anyways, I think, uh, I mean, and we'll, we'll go over that more and more in the future, but for now, I think uh, you just need to know that items start with zero. And now this is a list. And I can keep adding numbers here, and it will keep adding numbers to our list. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to continue with the operators. But, whoops, I'm going to Control-Z and get those back. I'm just going to delete that last one right here. But as you can see, we've got two numbers that we're providing for the inputs, and it's giving us the output. And I'm sorry if I'm going a little slow for you guys, but I really want these tutorials to be very monotonous and detailed so that I'm not skipping anything and you guys are understanding everything. So we've got A and a B number 10 plus 10 equals 20. I can move these up and down obviously and get different results. If I go ahead and plug these into the subtraction and then I want to copy this panel down to see what the result of that is as well. I can go and plug that in and I can say 9 minus 10 equals negative 1 obviously. I'm going to move these down a little bit and just do the same thing just to kind of be a little monotonous here just to make sure you guys understand what's really going on. I'm going to go ahead and copy this too. Put that down there. Down there. And again, all I'm doing is hitting, clicking on the component and hitting Control c Control v and that's copying the, this component down for us. So now if I plug the result of the division in here, I get 0 0.9, obviously because 0.9, which is A, divided by 10, which is B, is 0.9. And then the same goes for the multiplication. I should get a 90 because 9 times 10 is 90. And there you have it. So I think that that is, is, is a kind of a good analysis of these operator components.